people that swore to defend and protect the citizens of the United States. These men have no honor and we cannot abide by their word or trust their so-called evidence. Sandra Bland was already dead in her nug shot. There are factors that stand by this conclusion as well as significant evidence Waller County law enforcement was involved in tampering with much of the documentation as well as the mug shot. Allow us to run you through those points. Number 1. Waller County Jail does not put their detained in orange jumpsuits until after they have been processed. Evidence of this is all across their online records. Every detainee is in street clothes, looking straight at the camera, with their shoulders angled, and their bodies away from the wall. This brings us to point number two. Look at her hair. Her locks are pointing back instead of hanging straight down. Her head is clearly resting on the surface behind her. Her shoulders are resting at a 180 degree angle. A clear sign that she is on the floor, and on her back. Another clear indication is cited when examining the fat on her face, as it is being pushed towards her ear by the force of gravity. Let's take a second, and ask ourselves, why would law enforcement officials take a nut shot with the accused on the ground and on their back? More on that in a second. 3. If you look to the left side of her face, which is right of the photo, you can see that her face droops lower on one side than the other. This happens when oxygen is cut from the brain, also on the right side of the photo. Observing her neck, you can clearly see faded bruise marks present as well, a failed attempt at masking it by officials. 4. All documents submitted by the Waller County Police Department to the public as of now have been deemed unreliable as there's heavy suspicion that all documents have been doctored prior to being released. She was not suicidal at the time of her arrest. If she was, why was she not put on suicide watch? Waller County officials do claim Bland spoke of an earlier suicide attempt. However, we have yet to believe anything they may say. There's no concrete evidence or prior medical history. 5. Officials, using the media to peddle their agenda, popularized the accusation that Sandra Bland first had marijuana in her system and that it somehow affected her cognitive ability to think straight and led to her suicide three days later. Then when they found out this wasn't a believable cause, they pushed another speculation saying that she either quote, smoked or ingested a large quantity of marijuana in her cell. 6. CNN reported a cellmate next door describing the entire dilemma as quiet and that she did not hear any struggle or screaming. Why did they not ask her if she could smell marijuana as well? 7. The booking sheet belonging to Sandra Bland, also released to the public, does not show a clear mug shot. Both front and side shots are darkened to the point where no facial features can be seen. 8. Both the cell photo that was released as well as the dash cam were either edited or irrelevant. The photo of cell 95 was taken either before Sandra even arrived to the cell or after her death. Both have issues. If the photo was taken before, we know for a fact that Waller County officials have something to hide and decided to peddle this to the media. If the photo was taken right after